Good day, Internet. Good day, Internet. Good day, Internet. Good day, Internet. Oh, friends, you just don't even know what secrets lurk in the stomachs of your hosts of this show. Whoa. My no. stomach is some, uh, secret free. You don't know and you don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, just email us. We'll tell you. Anyway, shall we do the Day of the Technique show? <laughs> sure. I yeah. think so. Yeah. That's All a right. great idea. Very mm-hmm. good. Well, then let's do that in three, two. This 10th year Daily Tech News show would not happen if it weren't for you. Thanks to every single one of you who supports the show, like Miranda Janelle, Justin Zellers, Pepper Giese, and Bill Baggins. On this episode of DTNS, Meta connects us with a new VR headset, upgraded smart glasses, and lots of AI, plus what the FTC is up to with Microsoft, yeah, still, and Hollywood writers get AI guidelines. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 27th, 2023. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Prune, I'm Sarah Lane. From Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger J. Studio Prune, did you like take a bath? Are you drinking <laughs> juice? What? I like prunes. And you, you just like prunes? Prunes, prunes no get a bad rap. Prunes yeah, like are prunes. yummy. I mean, don't, don't eat 20 of them. You no. know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. no. But they've, otherwise, been, they've been improperly I love a prune. stereotyped. Stereotypes, and they've been maligned mm. over the years. They're fine. There's nothing. They wrong are with Daily Tech News Show. Delicious. Yeah. That's prune right. positive. That's right. <laughs> yeah, indeed. PPs. <laughs> All right, let's start with the quick hits. <laughs> Apple's Eddie Q testified as part of the U.S. versus Google antitrust case. Q was asked about Apple's Information Services Agreement, or ISA, which makes Google the default search engine on Apple's software, like the Safari browser. Q negotiated the latest renewal of the deal back in 2016 and says there's not a valid alternative to Google. Apple chose Google because it was the best product. Anchor's smart home cameras, uh, the ones they sell under their Eufy brand, E-U-F-Y, now offer cross-camera tracking and video splicing, you know, like in the movies. Uh, So if you have multiple cameras, you can follow motion from one camera's view to the next and see it as one continuous video, all spliced together. Feature works with Eufy's Homebase 3 Hub. So you have to have that piece of equipment, the Homebase 3 Hub. And it uses an on-device algorithm to identify people and stitch those videos together. It's part of a free beta that you can use right now, and then they'll release it as part of their paid subscription in Q4. The Eufy Homebase 3 is available for $150.00. And they introduced a new line of cameras and spotlights as well, but the cross-camera tracking will also work with older Eufy cameras. Well, as expected, Amazon has named former Microsoft executive Panos Panay as the new lead of Amazon's devices and services division. Panay spent 19 years at Microsoft, most recently leading the Windows and Devices division. He'll officially start at Amazon at the end of October. And the folks who work on the Echo devices said Panos Paye. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Analyst Ming Chi Kuo speculates that reports <laughs> of iPhone 15 models overheating probably have to do with the new titanium frame, not the chip. A lot of people are like, the chip's overheating. Kuo says, chip's probably fine. It's probably just not dissipating the heat fast enough. Uh, Quo says titanium negatively impacts thermal efficiency and notes there's also a reduced heat dissipation area in the iPhone 15. He does expect that Apple will address the issue with a software update. Well, one would hope. Uh, Multiple news outlets reported on their experiences with Mercedes-Benz's new drive pilot system coming to the 2024 S-Class and EQS sedans. It'll be the first Level 3 automated driving system approved for use by the public in the U.S. Level 3 means that the driver doesn't have to pay attention at all times, but has to be ready to take over when needed. You can take your hands off the wheel, but you can't go to sleep <laughs> in, in <laughs> essence the systems will not will be will only be available and active in California and Nevada to start 
In addition, they'll only be uh, active uh, at speeds less than 40 miles per hour while following a vehicle on dry, clear, well-marked and pre-mapped roads. And L.A. freeway traffic at rush hour would be a great example of this. You Mm. might say, uh, when would my area be a great example of this? Well, this is sort of phase one. Las Vegas traffic, <laughs> since it's also in Nevada. There you go. Also, yeah. also Sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you could watch YouTube with level three, but don't watch the Chill Beats YouTube or you'll fall asleep. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> Well, at its Connect conference on Wednesday, Meta unveiled the Quest 3 headset, offering improved performance for a higher price over the Quest 2. The Quest 3 will go for $500 for the 128 gigabyte model and pivots from just VR to mixed reality. At least that's what the company is is doing this uh, marketing-wise. This is commonly known as XR. So when you see XR, mixed reality is what they're talking about. Meta now refers to its headsets as gaming and productivity tools rather than just sort of for fun. The Quest 3 has 30% higher resolution, new lenses, faster Qualcomm chip, dual color pass-through cameras, so that's the mixed reality stuff. A souped-up version for $650 has 512 gigabytes of space. Pre-orders are opening now, shipping on October 10th. I mean, these are pricier than the old Quest 3. They're kind of uh, evolutionary, not revolutionary. Mm. But I I have to say, there's a lot of the hands-on reviews came out like right along with the announcement. Everybody's fairly positive about these. Yeah, they seem um, they seem excited. I I can't tell uh, from some of the video. It's hard for me to tell what the difference is with VR. A lot of the times, the whole history of VR as we know it is usually a technology if you really want to appreciate what you're looking at you kind of have to have it on your head videos don't really do it justice but from what i can tell this is definitely a bump from last time the big question for consumers is is it a you know double the price bump for the lowest entry model or not Mm. Uh, and that's yet to be seen but i i think it looks great well i think i think at this point uh at least as far as you know q1 of next year we'll all be talking about the quest 3 versus the Apple's Vision Pro. Mm-hmm. Um, very different price points. Vision Pro, uh, by all uh, accounts, is based on development. Let's figure out how to make this cool. You know, developer community, this is not for just the average consumer unless they have $3,500 to spare. Uh, the Quest 3 is. The Quest 3 is exactly for that. Yeah. Um, I am, I am, I am a uh, Quest apologist, uh, for better or for worse. I love the Quest. I have been really interested in how uh, the 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 technology has sort of uh, slowly but surely uh, evolved, and and yeah, I think you're going to have to pay for something that is. Better than the Quest 2, which was, by all accounts, a lost leader. Uh, Jahandar in the chat wonders how XR is different from AR. It basically just means you can do VR and augmented reality. And I think that's probably the differentiator with the Quest 3 is that the Quest 2 could do the augmented reality pass through, but it was pretty grainy and it was it was it was not exactly black and white, but it wasn't color. Right. Uh, the Quest 3 has a higher resolution pass through. Uh, it's not a, nearly as grainy and it can do full color. So I, I mm-hmm. think you might mm-hmm. see a differentiation there uh, in what kind of augmented reality stuff the Quest 3 can do. Hence them emphasizing the XR nature. Yeah. And the There's X, the X just, really just means yeah. cross, right? Just crossover. Extended. Like, yeah, yeah. Extended. Yeah. Cross and yeah. Over. There's also just so many reasons why. You know, this idea of crossing over, you know, people go, well, you know, how many times a day would I wear this? And this would be necessary for me. For a lot of people, never. Um, <laughs> I, You know, I, I use VR for exercise primarily. And uh, the crossover stuff is mostly so that I make sure I don't trip over my dog. Um, but... This is technology that I understand is going to make a lot of sense for people doing things besides, you know, putting on a headset and then going dark for an hour. 
that's, I think what, uh, my big takeaway from Meta's announcement is like, we can still provide that for you. But uh, for anybody who just didn't really like the idea of full VR, now it's more of a lifestyle yeah, product. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to expand what we can do with that. And that's yeah. where they're going to try to compete with the Vision Pro. Uh, a few more notes coming out of the Connect keynote. Xbox Cloud Gaming coming to the Quest in December. That's not <laughs> XR. That's just a big virtual screen hanging in space in front of you playing a 2D game. But uh, they're also getting Roblox, a Stranger Things game. Lego Brick Tales is interesting because it is a PC game, but they are making it uh, tabletop. So you, they are taking advantage of, of the augmented reality for that. Um, also a MetaQuest business platform launching in October that's designed to offer enterprise augmented reality apps. That'll be compatible with a lot of different business platforms, including Microsoft 365 that's coming to the Quest later this year. And Meta talked a lot at Connect about AI the chatbots are coming. We mentioned this on Monday uh, to WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger. They use something called the Expressive Media Universe to offer Dolly like uh, capabilities. So you can do a prompt to get an image. It's Meta's own custom made large language model. They said it's based on the core principles of Llama 2, but it appears to be much more limited. Uh, and it includes those 28 personas. Uh, based around people like Mr. Beast and Snoop Dogg and Paris Hilton, etc. They also announced Meta's AI Studio. We'll let you make your own AI companions. So that's pitched at brands, not individuals. Uh, you know, if I'm Kraft Cheese, I can make a chatbot that reflects my brand value as Kraft Cheese and customer <laughs> expectations that I'll know a lot about cheese. Uh, alpha of that uh, is available now and it'll start expanding next year. And you'll be able to edit images and create stickers in Instagram with text prompts. So Restyle adds a filter based on a text prompt. Backdrop lets you change the background based on a text prompt. Uh, real quickly, before we get to the last part of the announcement, which is the sunglasses, what do you think of the AI stuff? I mean, personally, I think that uh, it's a, it's surprising we haven't already seen it integrated in, so it makes sense to me. With this, We're going to hear this from everybody from here until the end of time. Our new thing also includes these AI things, whatever they end up calling it. The and Instagram it's filter smart. feels real, though. Like, yeah. that feels like a... You know, oh, these are, like and these are useful case cases, by the way, and I, I don't yeah. actually decry these. I think these are a great idea. I think that the more, the more intelligent re interactions I can have with both my hardware and my software in my life, I'm happier to do that. So um, everyone wants to freak out and act like they're, they're going to become sentient and all that. Forgetting mm -hmm. all of that, this is a, this is a good move for, for this device. Qualcomm also announced two new Snapdragon chips along with the hardware. So one of them's going in to the Quest 3, the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2. We mentioned that already. Uh, the other one uh, is going into the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. They're not Ray-Ban Stories anymore. They're Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. They're getting the Snapdragon AR1 Gen 1. Uh, this set of glasses has better on-device augmented reality processing, no heads-up screen. So when we're talking about augmented reality, it means it can recognize something and then talk to you about it. Hmm. Uh, the glasses have upgraded from a 5 megapixel to a 12 megapixel camera, can live stream to Instagram and Facebook with that higher video quality. Software update next year will add things like landmark identification or sign translation so that you can look at something and say, what does that say? And it'll translate it into your language. They're available in really good styles, Wayfarer and Headliner styles. They really do look like sunglasses. Pre-order now, ship in October 17th, starting at $299 for standard lenses. If you want polarized, that's $329. If you want transition, it's $379. And then your prescription is a sliding scale on top of all of that. I continue to wonder how much uh, AR glasses will sell. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, he, here I am, you know, wearing an Apple Watch, love it, uh, gives me all sorts of value throughout the day. Uh, glasses would give different value, but there's a lot of this is your personal style thing that you have to buy into in order for this to work. Wayfarers, cool personal style, but not for everybody. And I just don't know how you have somebody wear something on their face that d doesn't have that many options that mm. you're going to get a lot of people to buy. Yeah. It is kind of a hoping that 
one or a few sizes fit all. Um, mm. My 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 thinking is there's there's a future where I'm adding something to a pair of glasses, a pair of prescription glasses, and I'm clicking it into them, and they're modular, and now those become smart glasses, and that stuff is small enough that it's not really sticking out. Like there's a lot of ways this technology could head. This is a decent you know step into that world and i i'm it's exciting to watch this particular aspect of uh of ar evolve yeah from yeah where we were i wanted we were to get there too i just yeah. i'm like ah you know it's a tough sell for a lot yeah. of people I think, who are like, I think it's eh. i think it's smart not to put the the on screen for these because they keeps the price down keeps mm -hmm. the expectations down but i'm with you sarah it also keeps the intended market down right yeah. how right. many people are yeah. really gonna want that like i might um, say this is ex my exact style sorry i think you should leave reference there but um for a lot of other people like eh, no i don't know yeah. yeah. Uh, well, real quickly, uh, in other hardware related AI news, the information sources say that Sam Altman at OpenAI has been working with Apple former designer Johnny Ive on hardware. We don't really know anything else about it. That's all we know. Uh, the Verge notes that Altman uh, worked with Thomas Meyerhofer in the past on the orb for WorldCoin. Uh, Meyerhofer, also a former Apple designer. And Altman invests in Humane, which is run by former Apple employees developing a wearable AI device. Uh, so, Something, something coming out of there. You know, the the movie Her, uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix and with the voice of Scarlett Johansson, is often brought up in situations like this. Like, oh, remember, you know, and like the guy fell in love with the AI type thing. But mm. I feel like this idea, at least, you know, you know, j just uh, not knowing a whole lot uh, of what's going on. If they're... If there was a sort of place that you could go and talk to AI and get information and get smarter and have them help, and then you sort of, uh, you know, take off the headset. And, and again, I'm using a headset just because I don't exactly know what else we would do. That is interesting and not really anything that anyone else is doing right now. I mean, Amazon would beg to differ. They, they basically say, we're putting a large language model into Echo. You can sit there and talk to it all day long. You don't even have to put it on your head. Yeah. hundred percent. But uh, I think, you know, Amazon could also be accused of being a little behind the game as far as AI stuff is concerned. And that's yeah. why they're using Anthropics AI uh, and, and not developing their own, which is probably a smart move. Yeah. The US FTC has not given up on evaluating the Microsoft Activision Blizzard merger. They have a dream and they're not letting go of it. Uh, it's a bit thorny. Here's what's happening. The UK is still in the final stages of approving the deal that's expected to happen. October 18th is still the new extended deadline for the deal to get done. Uh, and to catch you up on the FTC, yes, it tried and failed in July to get the courts to prevent the deal from closing and it lost. So it withdrew its administrative challenge. That's its internal investigation. And its appeal of that preliminary injunction isn't going to be heard until December 6th. So everybody thought, well, that's that. Well, <laughs> that's not that. The news today is the FTC has refiled for its administrative procedure, which will take place 20 days after the appeals court rules. So sometime in either December or January, this is an internal procedure for the FTC. So if they were to win that case with their own internal administrative judge, they could issue a cease and desist to unwind the merger, which will be closed by that time. And Microsoft can appeal that cease and desist. And then the FTC would have to go back to federal court to enforce its decision where it has already lost. Um, it's a, it's a long shot. FTC just, just doesn't want to give this up. Yeah. They seems like they're almost enjoying it. They want to keep toying with it or something. I don't know what's going on with that, but it feels like, um, I don't know, people I talked to on the ground over there at Activision Blizzard, are both at the same time hopeful that this goes through without naming any names. And also some of them are certain that it's going through. And I don't know how it doesn't at this point. This just feels like another weird delay that will be kind of fruitless. It's not even a delay though. That's the thing, right? Microsoft's going to close. It's right. not going to do anything unless 15 unlikely things happen. Yeah. And that's just, it just seems like a waste of whatever resources being spent doing it. It seems like a waste of that. 
And I think that's probably just money. So, so I don't know. I wish they would knock it off, but also at the same time, I understand that, you know, you have to, you go through all the venues you have to go through. If you're serious about a thing, it's like copyright law, except this, you know, this is the government speaking, but, but if you're going to try to uh, make your point, you got to make it all the way till all your stuff's exhausted. So I guess to exhaust yourselves, but it sounds to me like this thing's going through one way or the other. Uh, speaking of, uh, going through, um, Chris Metzen, Scott, friend of yours, one time lore master of world of Warcraft is returning to Activision Blizzard come hell or high water to create the next generation of adventures in world of Warcraft. He retired from Blizzard back in 2016. Folks might remember returned as an advisor in 2022. Now coming back full time. So yeah. Scott, you and Chris, you're your buds. You have a good relationship. Uh, uh, are you are you excited about this? I am. Um, it's actually nice that it finally came out officially because I've known about this for a really long time and I didn't want to blow it and drop the bomb on the show sometime when I wasn't supposed to. So I've been kind of walking on eggshells not to accidentally reveal it. But um, it isn't exactly a secret that he'd been <laughs> back there for a while. But what his actual role would be ultimately how much uh, front-facing public stuff we'd get out of Chris. That was all a little bit unknown. Um, it's important to note here that he's going to be specifically focused 100% on the Warcraft team. That means World of Warcraft and anything connected to Warcraft. Um, and that means other games that are either unannounced or some of the stuff that already exists, like uh, their, their new mobile game coming out and, and uh, you know Hearthstone may fall under this, under this. But really, that's the focus. Where it used to be, he was in charge of all franchise development over at Blizzard. And that meant every game they had under the roof. So this is a very laser focused uh, thing. Uh, I can tell you, it sounds like they have some really cool stuff going on. I think Warcraft, Warcraft fans have every right to be excited about this. And we'll learn more at BlizzCon where uh, there's a very good chance you'll see him on stage again. First time since 2016, I want to say 17, maybe. And uh, he'll probably have a lot to say about what they've been working on. So it's very mm -hmm. exciting stuff for Blizzard right now. Another photo of confidence that everything's going to be fine at Activision Blizzard yeah, to see yeah. he, he wouldn't go back there if he didn't didn't think this was all going to work I can out tell somewhere. you that that is 100% yeah. true. Chris yeah. Chris was retired for a reason. It wasn't, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into details here, but for him to go back and to take the reins of something like this meant that it had to be right. And I'm I'm sure that that's the case. So it's, it's people should be excited. I'm genuinely excited and I haven't subbed the game in eight, nine months. Uh, this means I will probably get back in when when we start to hear what's going on. Well, folks, real quickly, uh, if you liked that Experiment Week episode, AI named this show, good news, it's a full-on show. Uh, lots of episodes out already. Each week, Tristan Jutra and Tasia Custody wade through the hype and the doomsaying and keep you informed about what's real regarding the world of artificial intelligence. Go look for AI named this show in a podcatcher near you or at AI named this show. Dot com. The Writers Guild of America and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers have reached an agreement. You probably heard about this. Among the agreed two terms are rules governing the use of AI tools. Here's the gist. If AI tools are used to create material within a script, a WGA writer, maybe somebody who prompted the material, gets the credit. You can't give the credit to an AI. That's, that's, that's the agreement. AI cannot be credited as a source. A studio also can't tell a writer to use AI tools or even what AI tools to use. Yeah, and companies that writers are working for have to disclose if any materials that were given to a writer were generated by AI. Companies may use writer materials to train their own models, but the WGA reserves the right to step in if it determines training violates the agreement or law. In other words, the WGA can put a stop to the training if it feels off. Aside from AI guidelines is the fact that streamers must now share streaming data with writers. Uh, this would apply to many people in this audience probably, so that they know just how well the projects that the writers have worked on have done designed to offer increased royalty payments. 
Yeah, I I think the AI part of this got more attention than it deserved. And this is just my opinion, uh, but I always felt like it was a pretty easy thing to come up with some rules around. Don't give a credit to AI. Let the writers have control over the tools. Let the writers use the tools. Don't ban. There was talk about banning AI from. These are all reasonable things. I think. I think so, it's yeah. clear from this agreement that the fight, the real fight, was over the royalties for streaming and the sharing of data and how many writers can be in a room. And they, they solved all those too. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, Tom said it really well on a, on a brief segment this morning on TMS and we're reiterating it here, but just made a great point about how a lot of these hot button issues like AI being used in the writing process just became kind of a propaganda point and not just for the writers. I mean, it just seemed like it was this hot moment of like, well, AI changes the whole thing. We need these strikes more than ever because of AI. AI seemed to be at the pinnacle of all of it. And at the end of it, it's pretty reasonable what they want to do. Like, it's pretty straightforward. I don't think anyone had to make major crazy concessions on the AI front. Um, and if they did, you know, we're probably never going to hear about it. But this just seems like a good, reasonable thing. It gets revenue back where it, where it should mm -hmm. be. They have three more years to work under a new contract they all agreed on. None of this has any impact on uh well maybe it have some impact but no impact uh immediately anyway on the actor strike that's still going on uh and you have the potential of the video game performers and actors strike looming they've all uh they voted overwhelmingly to strike so they have to come up with either an agreement there really quick or strikes will happen so still a lot of this going on but at least the writers can get back to the table and we can get our get our talk shows back and you know, some of the stuff that was maybe yes. uh, we, we were feeling. Oh, Scott, place. I know you're such a morning talk show guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, you do your own. Uh, right. But yeah, I don't I don't really see it. You know, what struck me as uh, I think all of these new terms make sense. Nothing about this seems crazy, out of whack, anything. I just wonder how many. And maybe it's because of, you know, my own inability to use chat GPT to help my job day to day. I mean, trust me, if I could, I would. I just don't think that it actually helps my day to day job. It might help your day to day job. Totally depends on what you're doing. Um, in fact, just the other day, somebody, you know, I was talking about writing up a contract and they said, why don't you just use chat GPT? And then, and then, you know, and then and then go from there. I was like, oh, wow, never even thought about that. Um, yeah. I think that there are a lot of writers where this is not even going to be an issue at all. Never has, never will. Uh, mm. But uh, it's good to have these uh, these 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 laws, as it were, in place. Yeah, I think I think the bigger the bigger role for AI is helping the writers when they're like, you know what, I, I just need some ideas. I, I need I need to lay out a scenario. I've got like the tedious part of script writing, like like maybe some formatting or something that I want the tools to use. And I'm sure. glad that this agreement contemplates that and says, yes, they are allowed to use those. You can't tell them they have to use them, but they get to use them. And no, the studio execs can't tell chat GPT, come up with scripts and replace the writers, which I don't think was ever going to happen anyway, but now it's on paper that it can't. So there you go. Yep. Indeed. Well, um, should we thank Scott or do I, I don't know, Sarah, do you think he did a good, good enough job? Oh, I don't you know, know, Scott, week after week, you do a really good job. You know, I'm always trying to dock you for something and I just can't find it anything you're like an ai yourself uh thank you for being on the show let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work well uh there is good news everyone um i have a show called core on thursdays it's actually friday this week but it's a weekly show about video games and it's not just hey what are we playing it's like the big issues so we are going to tear apart this medicine news in a way that uh we don't have time for here today we're going to really go deep in what it might mean to have you know one of the one of the creators of the warcraft franchise coming back to the roost and doing something if you want to hear that big blown out discussion we'll be doing that and we'll be talking about starfield or this crazy idea that cyberpunk after three years of release is actually in 10 out of 10 shape now somehow three years later we'll talk about that all kinds of stuff in that zone so if that interests you at all come check us out core wherever you get your podcasts or you can find it all directly at frogpants.com slash core now it's free preview week 
Everybody's getting the full show. So I would normally say patrons stick around, but everybody stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. CNN Max is live. The last of the U.S. streamers to put live news in its app. It's launched in beta. It's uh, a second pass at premium news, although unlike CNN Plus, it's not a separate thing you have to pay extra for. It's just right in there in your Max subscription. And we'll talk about it. Stick around. Just a reminder, we do the show live. Did you know? You can catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We are back tomorrow talking about lab-grown embryo models with Dr. Nikki Ackerman joining us. Don't miss it. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> All right, folks, if you have a burning need to title the show, uh, it's probably because you're watching or listening live, because otherwise you know what the title is. So get in there in the Twitch chat or the Discord, uh, and then go to showbot.tv slash DTNS2, where you can find all the fine titles that folks have submitted and vote on them. And then Sarah will shine down upon your suggestions and select one. As long as they're really good. Yeah. Otherwise, well, yeah, you'll either shine I or... will strike down... Mm, with those suggestions. Oh, man. <laughs> <I'm> scared. <laughs> That's a tasty burger. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk I, about I forget CNN. the rest of the monologue. Yeah, about. I will anyway, strike you down get it. You get it. Furious anger. Anger. Those furious who anger. attempt to destroy. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, it, it, we're close enough. Yeah. <laughs> CNN launched CNN Max in beta on Wednesday combination mm -hmm. of primetime shows so a lot of the stuff anderson cooper's in there and uh, all, all all the folks that you normally see on cnn a lot of them are there the other stuff is cnn international so you're getting almond poor and some of the best cnn international stuff in there as well mm -hmm. and they have a, a few things that are original like state of the race with casey hunt or, i'm sorry that's an international one uh they have a few things that are original uh i think, that are I like think that's news. new though Right. Uh, there, there's a few things that are that are news that are original in there. Uh, CNN Max is available to all Max subscribers. This is not going to be like sports where it's free for a while and then they char upcharge you. Uh, at least that's not what they're saying now. Uh, this is a, a thing that is similar to what they do in Peacock or Paramount Plus, where it's just part of the package. You, you get to watch the news. Um, there's also on demand. If you don't want to watch the live stream, there's 900 hours of programming from CNN originals. So Anthony Bourdain, Stanley Tucci, stuff like that is in there as well. Um, I feel like this is the last piece, right? Max is, is, is playing a little catch up because all of these streaming platforms in some way or another in the U S we are talking U S only because that's where, where these companies are setting the templates for this stuff, but it is, uh, a lot of dramas, uh, a lot of reality shows, live sports, and news. And mm. now, now Max has them. It. Yep. Uh, they all have them. I think the real, <clears throat> the real uh, good deal here is that they're not going to charge an extra fee per month for this. Um, I would have suspected they would, or like you said, do some kind of trial, and then you know, now it's now it's an extra five four ninety nine or whatever. The fact that they're not doing that is good. Um, some of the stuff was already there, like the Stanley Tucci thing and all that Bourdain stuff. That was already yeah. That's just they're collecting it all under this name. Exactly, guess, yeah. and they've got some pretty good documentary content that wasn't there, for, uh, CNN documentary stuff that I would love to see over there. So that would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think this just kind of is we're watching we're watching Max evolve itself the way they said they were gonna, kind of in real time. As irritated as everybody was about the HBO branding being pulled off there and concerns about what the channel or what the streaming service would become like. It hasn't been that bad. And then there's still the best place to get older movies. So I, I really, I really like this. I'm not even that big of a CNN fan, but I just think the more free content you're giving me, the more value that seems like for an expensive service. So you're, you're, you'll probably keep me around more if you give me extra stuff. So go for it, I guess. And it's uh, not, 
a hobbled version. Some some of the early launches of news, like like ABC World News Now, mm-hmm. felt like, well, it's got the ABC logo, but I'm not seeing any of the stuff I see on you know World News Tonight or 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 ongoing coverage. Yeah, um, that's that's changed. They they have started to move some of that stuff over. This is a, a great first edition, almost the opposite of what they were planning with CNN Plus, right? Mm-hmm. Where it was all different stuff. This is, hey, I know that the cable companies aren't going to be extremely pleased with us, but we're almost giving you CNN. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly so that we're not violating any contracts, but you really won't miss CNN if you watch this, is my guess. Does it does otherwise feel like watered down content? It feels like a a half measure. And so this does feel like more like, oh, I'm getting the real thing. I'm not getting uh, basically a counter. You won't won't really notice it's not the real thing, is my guess. Especially if you're somebody who's not like a constant 24 hour news person which i am absolutely i think i think not. that's the key yeah. that's the key of like do you like a variety of programs uh do you i mean kind of care about live but maybe not every day uh then this could be and i'm i'm that person you know i'm like i just you know i, I i'm sorry <laughs> appointment viewing just doesn't work for me anymore because i have so many other options with so many other um, ways to consume content. So I, I like this. I also, mm-hmm. I like uh, the back catalog of a lot of stuff that I've never not seen before, where I might learn about, I don't know, the politics of a certain company uh, or a certain country or, uh, you know, or both. Um, and I can, I can go through that at, at my leisure. Mm. Yeah, it's like, and I'm uh, not really like a huge CNN person either. In fact, mm-hmm. I don't really know when I tuned into CNN. Besides there being a catastrophic thing, uh, the Maui fires was the last time where I was like, you know what? All right, let's let's see what they're talking about live. Um, so that really, really still matters. But mm-hmm. I think it's you know CNN being like. Well, we we do that for you, and we will continue to do that for you. But we have, yeah. you know, so much so much other stuff that you could consume in different ways. It's a great way for them to leverage a thing they already own, that is a big thing, that they can just slot in there. You know, once they get all the whatever internal agreements had to happen. But you know, Turner owns CNN. Turner's owned by Warner Brothers. Like it's all in the family, um, and a lot of these other streaming companies don't have stuff in the family. Like that, so I mean, they, they do. Bunker thinks some about do, that. some do, but like Paramount, Netflix, Paramount has CBS, uh, right. Disney has ABC for now, unless yeah. they sell it to Byron Allen. Yeah. Uh, the only one who doesn't is is Netflix and Amazon. Yeah, what would I guess? Netflix, Apple, Apple doesn't really. Yeah, happen. that's true. Amazon seems mostly interested in partnering with these services to do add-ons, and Netflix doesn't have a partner like that. But they've got the the clout and size and money to partner. So, they do documentaries. They don't do news. News, news, right? Yeah. Which I kind of like. I kind of like the focus, but I guess I'm saying if 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 they wanted to get into the live news market, I don't know who's left they could partner with that isn't already owned by one of those other companies. Yeah, they'd have to buy somebody like um, uh, uh, News Now is owned yeah. by. Um, is it? What, it's not called Tribune anymore. I can, and I'm blanking on the new name of the company uh, that used to be called. Right, that, I but, forgot that too. But yeah, they could, they could, they could buy an operation that way. I don't see them doing that. I mm-hmm. just feel like Netflix is like, now nah, we're HBO. Our yeah. version of news is to have real time with Bill Maher, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. That that's it. How HBO approaches it, or uh, or 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 um, uh, last last week tonight. Uh, mm-hmm. with John Oliver or something like that. And Netflix is like that. They'll have newsy shows, but I don't think they'll ever do news like this. Yeah, I think that's probably true. It's an interesting thing, though, because I, you know, back when Zaslav was making all Next the sabers star, rattle and all that, it. it just felt like it felt like we weren't sure where they were going. I think we have a better idea where this Max thing is headed. And it's kind of trying to be everything to everyone. Maybe that'll work in the end. I don't know. It's we're all doing fun. that, though. Yeah, I, I feel all, like that's true. That's true. I feel they're like that's... Good. That that's the interesting part of this is everybody's trying to be everything and therefore no one can be everything because the sports on Max isn't gonna be the sports on ESPN. 
right? Uh, you know, uh, the or or Hulu, ESPN Plus through Hulu, whatever it is. That's all the Disney's got its own little bifurcated system. But it, if you think of it as a bundle, it's essentially equivalent to all of this. I don't know if it's the legacy, the the HBO part of things that keeps this alive. Um, and I mentioned it earlier, but the their ability to retain a constant catalog of some of the best films rivals all of them including Netflix, especially Netflix actually these days and it used to not be that way it used to be yeah. easier to get older movies or movies that were considered classics or artful you know big big art Scorsese movies or whatever they were those seem to happen in other places but but Max has consistently kept the best that catalog is just amazing in fact film sack used to be Netflix only then we started branching out occasionally now we're almost always max, not even on purpose. Really? It just, that's where they are. Because we'll do a search and go, oh, that movie's on max. I guess we'll watch it on max. And I think for the last six movies, six weeks, they've all been on on max, which none of us saw coming. And, I, and that's a really small, weird sample group because it's film sack and it's not exactly the same. It's just your average whatever. But <laughs> And you're not after the best movies for film Not sack. always, no. Yeah. But occasionally it'll be like, oh, um, I don't know. Uh, I want to see some Nolan movie. Well, four of the five that are the good ones are all on Max right now. You know, like they just always seem to have the best stuff in rotation. And I, I don't know if that's just us and the way it feels to us, or if that's how everyone feels. But Techno Mench points out they have Turner Classic Movies, TCM, mm -hmm. uh, HBO, and Cinemax, yeah, all all under that umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a lot of a lot of licensing experience. To, yeah, to play that game with and good series. I don't know, like. Like everyone was worried about Max losing its cachet, and there were some weird stuff with some shows getting pulled and everything. I uh, you know, I, I thought everyone was quitting Max. No yeah. one's going to watch Max anymore because everyone was mad about them pulling things off the platform. Yeah, people were mad, but it was mostly you know animation, which I love, and I I still think Max is the best home of animation, uh, especially adult animation of various kinds. Uh, Hulu's close second, but the it just hasn't been as nasty or as horrible. As everyone said, I would. I I still think H, taking HBO out of your branding is a weird move because it's prestige. Mm. But it, and we're not even really talking about that today. But my point is like them adding new features so far, I think has served them. Adding CNN, I think will serve them. Is there some point where it's too much or they, you know, they get feature creep in the in terms of programming? Maybe. Um, I, I don't know how that'll go in the long term, but right now it, they've improved their value with me and they haven't really offended me. So I'm sticking around with that one, I think. I also think it's worth uh, pointing out that this is this is a bellwether in the sense that uh, I, the only one left to fall is ESPN going direct to consumer for its main programming. Right. I know they, they have ESPN Plus, but none of the stuff that's on cable television, ESPN, is available through ESPN Plus. And Disney has said they're working on that. When that happens, yeah. that's it, right? It's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it, every person who cares about sports that uh, does not cover this as much as we do says to me regularly, Sarah, why can't I see the game on ESPN Plus? Yeah. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I mean. And you're like, well. Do you have 30 minutes for me to explain cable right. license? Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, it, but I it's, it's, it it's, con <laughs> it's confusing and yeah, yeah you're just, all, all you're going to do is alienate your own customer base. Yeah. yeah. And this, this is CNN, uh, e even though it's been eclipsed in the ratings, uh, had some of the more desirable contracts with cable TV operators, right? And I think it's worth pointing out that Fox is the one exception to everybody having a platform. Fox doesn't have a platform for its content. Fox stuff goes to Hulu or doesn't go anywhere. It just goes to its cable subscribers through authentication on the Fox app. Fo Fox owns Tubi. There's a few things that go there, but Tubi is just a free ad supported streaming television service. It's not meant to be a competitor for Peacock and, and such. So Fox News is in a situation where it is really only available on cable or through some cable like service like YouTube TV. Uh, CNN was a gold jewel that cable didn't want to allow onto the Internet. They didn't want CNN because to to stream on the Internet because they thought it would undermine one of the last reasons people kept uh, their cable subscription. And this is a big deal that Max feels bold enough or Warner Brothers Discovery feels bold enough to say like, 
well, it's not exactly. We're not we're not breaking the agreement by simulcasting. Come at us. You I mean, know? it's a, it's also like you said. Well, you kind of hinted at it, but they're not the same CNN they were. And I don't mean I don't mean mm -hmm. the quality or anything like that. I just think their their place in the marketplace has definitely shifted. Back in the Gulf War, it's all anyone cared about. CNN was the OG. You went there to find out who was bombing who and when and how. Mm -hmm. um, and that was true later in the second Gulf War. That has changed. And now there's many places you can go for this stuff. And some, some of that stuff's very divisive, as we know, politically or otherwise. And so CNN is not in the same place it used to be. So now maybe now is the perfect time for them to go, or we're a little embattled over there. Uh, and also cable isn't what it used to be. And also Max needs to grow. And, you know, a lot of and also's and they're all coming together to the point that I could see this being a really sensible move. Because what is the future of 24 hour news network? It ain't 24 hours news cable. Something's changing. And it, it shows not... that cable doesn't have the leverage over them to stop them from doing right. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that's all that power dynamics completely flipped. So, yeah, I, I think this is not only probably good for them to do this i think this is going to be indicative of a lot of this stuff like you said espn um you know it's funny you mentioned tubi i use tubi way more than i thought i would mm, T me tubi too. Ha tubi's great uh tubi also uh doesn't care if i have an ad blocker and i don't have to see ads on desktop it's just a little side note if you have an ad blocker you don't have to watch well, it, it will ad. eventually but it's not bothering it will it eventually right for whatever reason they have let that roll and i don't know why yeah. but um, but I find like, I'm, I love Halloween. I love Halloween and horror movies this time of year. Tubi has some of the best horror movies. So I'm just saying a little shout out to Tubi. I know you don't have much else going on Fox in the streaming world, but that's a pretty good one you got going there. Um, Scott, are you familiar with, I have not seen this movie, um, but it's called Slotherville. Slotherville. I've heard of yeah, it. Yeah, like Slaughterville, but. But starring a sloth. That's yeah, it's mean. a big, it's a killer sloth, which you know yeah. obviously is funny because it's yeah. so right. Um, it feels it feels Sharknado y to me, so probably not big on my radar. <laughs> but you know, it, you know Sharknado that how was kind are. of a big deal. Well, it People was, but it that. was it was it was artificial camp, right? Some like, somebody I don't even remember who. I think uh, Sharknado is available on Tubi as well. It is, yeah. All the I think a lot of the Sharknados are. Well, and I say that because Tubi is partnering with ChatGPT to add in uh, the smarts so that when you're searching, you can just say like, "Play where are the funny shark movies? And it'll use ChatGPT to surface Sharknado and others like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if they have the Meg. But. The thing with Slotherville and Sharknado and Mansquito <laughs> and all these sorts of things. Mansquito? They're trying, they're trying to capture. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a real thing. Oh. They're trying to capture. That's not a movie. That's a real thing. <laughs> they're trying to capture campiness forcefully. It's like trying to make a viral video, but you're trying to make it viral. You know what I'm saying? Scott, it comes off it's, disingenuous. It's a so mean like sloth it. who lives in a sorority <laughs> dorm. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is not to like? Um, okay. It forced uh, campiness. Is what is not the like. I don't know. What made you I mean, think of this, Sarah? Yeah. Some somebody had I don't know. It came across my desk at some point. Mm. Um, I mm. asked Heather Frank, who loves the stuff, um, over at Have Such a Good Day, and she was like, "Ooh, yeah, I don't know it, but this seems like something we would be into." She and her boyfriend really like you know kind of campy horror things. Sure. Sure. I don't know. I just think. Oh, because Scott was talking this, about horror movies. That's why. You, that's yeah, why yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, this yeah. didn't come out of like totally nowhere. But I, <laughs> I love a sloth. Yeah. I don't really like horror movies, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of into it if we're all in on the joke. So uh, let's see. see it. And and no shame. By the way, no shade on people who love that stuff. I love real like you know. Show me a Toxic Avenger any day of the week, and I'm happy. Um. <laughs> I like cheesy <laughs> stuff. I just don't like it when they're where Who the are you cheese calling is. cheesy. It's Sloths like a, everywhere. But Do like, not okay, like look, at, look at this way. Killer clowns from outer space from the eighties. That is <laughs> so pure. Lovely. That is pure. That's like a good cheese Best from France. movie from that year. <laughs> it's amazing. You take, you take cheese. Here comes Roger. A, if you go to <laughs> Italy or France or somewhere that know how to make really great cheese, that's that kind of cheese. It's almost accidental. Hammer horror films. Yes. The but then you do this stuff. You make Sharknado 4. You're making 
American, you know, those sliced green ones that come in slices and you peel off the plastic. That's that kind of cheese. It's just not really cheese. It's oh, a you mean the, cheese. Uh, the the uh, the cheese I'm not product. Not sure what kind of cheese we're talking about. It's you're talking like about craft. Si- you're talking about craft singles. Oh, craft like singles, singles are delightful. Oh, I don't mind eating them, but I know I'm not eating real cheese when I eat. It's it. not real I'm, cheese. No, yeah. I, I get I, I I get where we're going. Yeah, my here. metaphor yeah. is a long, boring one. But the if point you is, if you want to like, eat the single, eat the single. But you know the difference. Just know, yeah, know when you're eating Taco Bell versus like a really great street taco in Mexico. Yeah, there there's, we've said this many times. There's Mexican food. There is also Taco Bell. Those there are, you go. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's cheese. And Tom just summed it up perfectly. <laughs> and the, yeah. and the, the one that's cheaper oftentimes isn't the one you think. No. No. Also, just, <laughs> I wouldn't. The I would. cheaper cheese? Is that what we're talking about? No, the well, tacos. tacos. Oh, the tacos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you mm-hmm. may think is cheap. Like, well, also, I'm not saying you should eat street tacos in Mexico because I've had friends who almost died doing that. And I'm not saying they're all like that. Either. Almost like, died? Yeah, you got, a, you got a worm thing, a parasite from a street taco and almost killed them. I think oh. the Montezuma's revenge thing has always been a little overblown, but I also Sarah, have a you've strong eaten stomach. Street tacos, right? Yeah, uh, I have. In Mexico? I yeah. love a street yes. taco. And I had one in Mexico and it was fine. Sarah's a street taco Mexico survivor. So, yeah. There's your counter example. I ate a taco in Mexico and all I got was this. I also did get a brain parasite from eating street food. Not in Mexico. Not in Mexico. (laughs) No, it wasn't Mexico. So I'm like, eh. Was it here in the States? No, no, no. It was, well, hard to know. Uh, There are uh, a variety of endemic places that it could have been. Uh, (laughs) India, South America, and what was the other one? Uh, certain parts of Southeast Asia. Yeah. All could no, have it's been not, at it, fault. It is mm-hmm. not your story of getting the brain parasite, if people don't know, is real. That is not a joke. Uh, no, it is not no, it, funny. it really happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I did always find it. We, I've heard you tell this story over the years, and I always found it amusing when you tell the part where they're like, Well, have you been traveling lately? And you're like, Boy, howdy, have I? Because yeah. you had been everywhere right before that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, um, what, uh, oh gosh, I mean, how much time do we have? Not that much. Uh, so I'll keep it brief. Um, this was some, this is something that is really rare in the U.S. So, if it happens to you, um, and it can be a parasite in any part of your body, but it happened to be in my brain because I'm just cool like that. Mm, um, the they people. go, oh, where have you been recently? Um, because it is endemic in certain areas that I had been in. Mm. Um, street food, I eat street food all day. I'm not afraid of any street food. Even this didn't get me down. Um, and I wouldn't stop doing it. Uh, it just was a freak thing. You know what? It what doesn't tra- happen to really anybody, the but only, it happened to me. The only organism that traveled more than you that month was this parasite because you ate it and it went all the way back up to your brain. Man. That's right. No. That I is mean, a traveling. It could guy. have been something she drank too, like untreated water. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it could be a mango <laughs> my, lassie. Like, it wasn't my, even necessarily like some like weird meat thing. What, what nothing. Did, you know, it could, had, it, it could I, have been anything. Yeah. I was I was watching something. I'm trying to remember what it was, and it was a traveler, and he's saying like street food's okay. You just make sure they cook it right if it's something that's. But you don't know, co- just, and oh, even if, no, they if they're cook cooking it, it's in like, front of you, are their you can hands like, clean? And you know, there's listen, you have to like yeah. ask yourself that question every time. As long you as know, it's I, cooked and he, at a high temperature, yeah. you know, and the, you know they. They but like, how are you going to ask somebody that when you, you know, I'll give you, don't even I'll speak give the you, language I'll, and you're going through a train station for five seconds? It's a good point, folks. Yeah. You're you've got Sarah who's done this a lot, and <laughs> I would I would take her word for it. So, but her word was to eat. It was okay to eat street food. I was just saying, as long as it's cooked all the way through. I feel like most of the time it is. You know, freak things happen. Yeah. Uh, it's, it happened it's not to me. Like most but you were with other people on these trips and they didn't get the brain parasite. So exactly. Yeah. It exactly. was it was unusual. It's a it's just one of those things. Uh, you know, I mean I <laughs> you know, Nick with a practice C good F. hygiene, do all the things, but you're still not gonna you're not gonna uh, Nick, Nick totally stay away from these things. Street sushi? 
Streets. Oh, geez. I mean, when I was when I was in Taiwan in the late eighties, early nineties, over the summer, my aunt was very careful. It's like anything we eat, you she want she made she made sure like I want to see you cook it. It was very. <coughs> pardon me. It was. Yeah. Um, oh no! Cold, fortunately, I mean, it's uh, at the time you hepatitis was pumping? kind of a was a, a pertin a pretty rampant at that time from food. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think we're all. Uh, because of life, uh, at this point, you know, we're all, we have a better understanding of, of, you know, taking thing matters into your own hands, judging risk, you know? Yeah, exactly. If you know, you want that street taco looks kind of sus, but also looks delicious. Mm, No, you know, like, like how much can you really control that? you know, eventual Eating. yummy taco. I Not that get, much. I used to get regular hot dogs on gas station rollers. I know that's a bad idea. Wait, I what's know a gas those station? are older oh, than me. The ones like, oh, those, those are, dogs are... I don't think they're that bad of an idea because they keep them so hot. I, they're barely I will hot say, dogs, though. You know. well, I, I will say at uh, a.m. <laughs> p.m. At a.m. p.m. my <laughs> friend worked at, he would always say, come around 4 p.m. Because that's when we have, like, you know, company policy. We have oh, we actually put the, we policy. Put the new you dogs have to ditch all there. the food. So mm. you just grab, mm. like, all right, everything's like 50, 60% off. I so find like that people have much higher standards for other places' food than they do for their own. Like, I definitely know people who are like, "Oh, I wouldn't eat those 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 hot dogs." I I don't know how long they've been on the grill. Who then leave food out all day in their own kitchen and eat it and, and eat, eat it. it? Yeah, yeah, it's worse. Yeah piece of chicken yeah. on the counter all afternoon forget it mm-hmm. oh that's yeah. great you just need to nuke it that's what i do i leave oh, food out or I like something it. with cheese and the cheese starts getting like sweaty Ugh. yeah oh. oh yeah even and then, i and i mean and when, <laughs> trust me i will get a parasite i won't yeah. eat sweaty cheese <laughs> no sweaty cheese for you. <laughs> then your forehead's gonna look like the cheese real sh- shortly thereafter that's right <laughs> you know you just, just cheese I've, culture got, doesn't I've got with me. i've got a yeah <laughs> can't do it no, I mean, no, just my, just, you just need to microwave it. It doesn't matter if it's a salad, cheese, a taco, <laughs> just ice micro- cream. Microwave yeah, it gross. for two minutes. <laughs> it's going to kill everything straight through. That's if you horrifying. have a hot salad, eh, consider it a... It's horrifying, uh, but also not the worst advice. If you're in a pinch, but let's all hope that we're not I, in that pinch. Heat so, doesn't then, kill everything, though. Eh, that's, that's true. That's true. It doesn't. Gosh, There's do nothing. I know it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> like, what am I asking for another parasite? Come I mean, on. if you get the Freddy Krueger of parasites, yeah, it's, flames alone are not. No, no, no. We're, there, there's all kinds of things that can survive through heat. You, you kill most of the bacteria. That's not the only thing that can get you. Ironically, if mm. you microwave the Blu-ray 4K version of Parasite, it, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't actually work. It doesn't exist. It no, just it doesn't spawns. Do you get yeah. two copies. In Who your wins microwave. at the end of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it was it was a little up in the air. You know, I haven't seen that movie in a while, and I watched it. I think I watched it a total of three times because I liked it so much. It's such did. a good movie. It's yeah. such a good movie, and you know, I I recommended it to people, and you know, with with a uh, um a variety of results. You know, somebody someone would say, "Well, that that was uh kind of disturbing." I'm like, "Yeah, well, okay. it's called Parasite." I have, I, I think I've recommended this to you before, uh, Sarah, but you should watch Ginny's Kitchen on oh. Amazon. I think you have, and I Ginny's meant Kitchen. to write it down, and I never did. So and I'm, 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 I'm reminded of it because it takes place in Mexico. They're yeah. making street food. They're making Korean street food in Mexico. That's the the gist. Is like, ooh, introducing ah. cross culture. But they're in Mexico. They're making street food, and one of the people in the show is the kid from Parasite. Oh, really? Oh. Like he's working in the restaurant because all the people working in the restaurant are are celebrities in Korea. Oh, I see. Oh, Jenny with I a J. J I N N. So this is a reality yeah. thing, not a. It's not a drama. Yeah, or something yeah they that. they opened a pop up shop in Mexico to see you know what would happen uh and and they have to operate the restaurant and everything and oh great. yeah oh i'm Cor- into this korean uh korean mexican fusions are a thing too yeah Pretty right good combos yeah the best part is it's, like every once yeah. in a while someone goes you look familiar and he's just like yeah i was in the movie parasite <laughs> and they're like oh yeah that's what i heard. but that's don't great. worry i cook everything all the way through <laughs> so we cook yeah, i'm not like stuff. that i'm not like yeah. that <laughs> 
<laughs> None of our food has parasites. Just me. That's great. <laughs> oh, I'm that's funny. That. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, so love I could it. I could eat a right now I could eat a burrito with kimchi on it, for example. No problem. Wouldn't even hesitate. You know, last I, uh um, kimchi for lunch. Friday, I, I do that with all Shannon the time Morse, like, we yeah. were all talking about what, what you like, if you have to pick one cuisine for Oh, right. That was our debate. So I was like, sushi. Like, and everyone was like, sushi, though? Mm. And I was like, well, Japanese. Japanese mm-hmm, food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sure. You know, that's fair. Tom said Japanese Korean. Um, sure. I think somebody said Mexican. Uh, you know, and I keep thinking about that because I'm like, it does change by the day. Yeah. You know? I believe I would do. I, I'm with Tom. I would. Uh, Korean food is never not good. I love mm-hmm. it every time I have it. So I think I could. Plus, I feel like it's healthier. All my Korean siblings are skinny and healthy, and you know, don't <laughs> don't show their age. It seems yeah. to be working for them. Got to be some of the food. So it's, I think she's an anti. What do they call it? an anti agent or Asian? <laughs> Something. Yeah. No, I know. I know the word you're reaching for, but I can't think of it either. Yeah. Uh, well, the word I'm reaching for right now is thank you. Thank you to everyone who makes the show possible. I hope folks are enjoying the free preview this week uh, that we've been giving you. Uh, if you like this extended content and you want more of it, well, pop on over to patreon.com slash DTNS and become a member so it doesn't stop. Uh, we like to thank all of the folks who support us on Patreon. Dan's been over there liking posts. So's faking nose grub double zero. Uh, We got some comments and likes from Tony the Disney Dad and Jess Galloway, R.W. Nash. Thanks, everybody, for being a patron or becoming a patron. We also stream the video live on Twitch. Brian M64 and Zoe and Paley Glendale all gave us some bits. Reptar Reed followed us. Welcome, Reptar Reed. Rabbit 41 Lion Jim video with the bits. The High Voltage Steve Feinstein also gave us a follow. We got Buffy Rouge, Rocky the Rock 18 all in there. Thanks, everybody, for supporting us, for following us, for joining us. Without the patrons, we got no show. (laughs) Until tomorrow, though, thankfully, we have patrons, and we will do a show. Have a good day. Until tomorrow, Internet. Have a good day. Have a good day. Good day.